Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people in this country that feels that Trump causes divisions between race. And many feel that he hasn't done enough when police shootings happen. He doesn't do enough to unite the country. But you know what? I don't expect this from Trump. You know, after especially listening to his niece, you know, Trump thinks many things are weak that are actually normal things that people go through in their life. He views it as weak. So if he views it as weak, he's not gonna deal with it. This is just how this man is. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't expect nothing good from Trump. I don't. So I'm not disappointed by anything he does or say, because I never was expecting anything good from him in the first place. And I don't only feel that way about him, but many like him. I don't even waste my time expecting anything decent from you in the first place. So, ladies and gentlemen, this came out on NPR October 9th, 2020. I'm going to go ahead and play this audio. President Trump's rhetoric on race is ramping up in advance of the election. His critics say he normalizes hate speech and negates the experiences of black and brown Americans. And Pierce Leila Fonnell reports. Trump halted racial sensitivity training for federal workers and contractors last month. On the debate stage, this was his explanation. I ended it because it's racist. I ended it because a lot of people were complaining that they were asked to do things that were absolutely insane. The training, it aims to create inclusive work environments for everyone. At a rally in Bemidji, Minnesota last month, he said this to the almost exclusively white crowd. You have good genes, you know that, right? You have good genes. A lot of it's about the genes, isn't it? Don't you believe? The racehorse theory, you think we're so different? You have good genes in Minnesota. The racehorse theory, a belief from the discredited and discriminatory eugenics movement that some genes are superior to others. Again last week in Minnesota, he seemed to imply, quote, low-income people and minorities in the suburbs are ruining the American dream. And Democrats are calling the president racist. This week, Michelle Obama said he's scapegoating black and brown Americans. What the president is doing is once again patently false. It's morally wrong. And yes... It is racist, but that doesn't mean it won't work because this is a a difficult time, a confusing time. It's an accusation Trump's campaign says is a, quote, pathetic attempt to negate his incredible accomplishments for black America by labeling him something he's not. But critics point to the language Trump is using, like the racehorse theory, which echoes the early 20th century when eugenics shaped Nazi Germany's policies. It was behind the forced sterilization of women in places like North Carolina and Puerto Rico, says Ange Marie Hancock Alfaro. She's a professor of political science and gender studies at the University of Southern California. Now, most recently, we started to hear reports of women in ICE detention who were being sterilized without informed consent and certainly against their will. Alfaro says Trump's ramping up the tone of his successful 2016 campaign, and there are real-world ramifications, chief among them the normalization of racist fringe ideologies. There's been this emboldening of violence, this emboldening of a certain kind of rhetoric that I think really could become a problem. So even if there is a peaceful transfer of power in January, we do have to be very concerned about the legacy of what we've seen over the past four years. Trump is playing on fears of some white voters, says Natalia Melman Petrozella, a New York-based historian. It's no accident that all of these kind of flagrant comments, which feel really spontaneous, they all cohere around a narrative of elevating white Americans as the real Americans and around excluding those who don't fit into that as unworthy or unequal. He's not the first president to be accused of using dog whistles and race in his campaign. One example, Jimmy Carter, a Democrat. In 1976, during his campaign, he warned about low-income housing in suburbs and used terms like ethnic purity and black intrusion when discussing all-white neighborhoods. Petrozella says Trump's language is a strategic attack. On the idea that we must take seriously the experiences of people of color and the exclusion and racism that they have faced as a kind of defining aspect of American society. And so that's what he's attacking. 
Emmy Hart is an attorney who's conducted hundreds of racial sensitivity trainings. The trainings are designed to help people understand and work better across cultures. He was diplomatic in our first conversation, but after watching President Trump refuse to condemn white supremacy during the debate last week, he later did on Fox News, and then again attack mail-in voting as fraudulent with zero evidence, Hart's diplomatic tone disappeared. The president laid down a gauntlet, and I'm concerned for the safety of American citizens, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity. Every American should be concerned when our president is using race to divide us. It's the day after the election he's worried about. Leila Faudel, NPR News. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what good genes do these people have? Now, if I, now Trump is 74 years old. Trust me on this one. If I got a 74 year old from my family, Trump would look 90 next to them. Okay, even many of your young look old. <laughs> I don't know what, okay, good genes. Well, you know, I'm not offended when they talk like that and they talk, you know, um, equality and, you know, us being equal. I'm not concerned about that. You know, I'm not concerned about it because look at the way these people act. Look at the way the folks that look like Trump act in this country. Do you want to be equal to that? I sure don't. Their actions turn me off and it doesn't make me want to be like them. It makes me feel the opposite. No, I want to get as far away from that as possible. I don't want to be like, do you think I got this old to turn around and be something like Donald Trump? I don't want to be like Donald Trump with or without money, I don't want to be like Donald Trump and his money would not ex inspire me to want to be like him. Even that wouldn't do it. You know, I think they feel like they've made themselves look good and desirable to us. And they don't realize they have turned many of us off. You know? <laughs> I mean, seriously, you have turned many off. I bet if you went around this planet right now and say, would you want to be like an American? I bet you, you will hear a unanimous no, being that they've done so horrible with COVID. You know, once upon a time, you would have went around this earth and people would want to be like Americans because you sold a lie to them. That's what you did. You sold them a lie. But when they really get up close and in person with American life, when they come here, it's not what they think. I've spoken to foreigners and they will all tell you the same thing. Oh, no. You know, I thought it was going to be this way and this way. And then when I got here, eh, it's not what I thought it would be. I've heard that from many, many Many that even became naturalized citizens will tell you that. It's not what they thought it was going to be. See, America, they just sell you a fantasy. They sell you um, something that's really virtually not real. And they try to sell that to us in the Black community in a way like, you wish you were like us. No, I really don't. I really, truly, I really, truly don't wish to be you. But see, you want to hear that from us, but you may, but not all. You certainly won't get it from all of us. All of us don't feel that way. Maybe if there weren't so many atrocities, I would see things different. But it's too late to erase the atrocities. Even the ones happening today, there's a lot happening today. When you can see police killings on a, a daily basis, you can't erase those atrocities. Man, there ain't no way you gonna make the pig look pretty now. But y'all, please tell me what you think. I mean, Trump just don't have those abilities. He wasn't raised with those abilities. 
especially when you hear the niece talk. She said his father would see so many things as weakness and frowned upon things that were actually normal things to feel. So being that this man really emotionally is all messed up and you can tell he is. I mean, just say one bad thing about him and he gets wind of it. He don't handle it well. He really falls apart. And to be honest with you, his behavior, when he gets upset that people aren't saying favorable things about him, it's equivalent to a pouting child. You know, and even in his anger, his anger is very childlike. I just find that strange. But Trump, there's no need in you using code language. We already know how you feel. Personally, I don't care <laughs> how you feel about me as a black person, but there are some that do care. You know, I mean, whether you're in office or not, it doesn't seem to change my life either way. Life never changes for us, regardless of who's the, the president. It doesn't matter if Biden wins. I promise you, the way your life is now is going to be the same way if Biden was in office. It doesn't matter. These people aren't going to change our lives. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it doesn't matter which ones are in there. It doesn't change the life of anybody in the black community. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.